Hey, so today uh, I will we'll do the proof of the, we'll start with the proof of the statement on the roots. And uh, let's look again at what is our graph. So we have G is an AD graph. And as I was saying, uh, this, uh, this doesn't restrict us to this. We can use some symmetry to go beyond that. Now, is this too loud? No? no? OK. Uh, so G is an AD graph. And uh, this is how we interpret it as a graph of fusion. So an edge here, which in this case is viewed this way. So this, if this is alpha, and this is on some level i, and this is on the level i plus 1, and this is some beta, these are in vertices of g. Then this edge here is a uh, home from sigma 1 tends uh, alpha to beta. So it's very important to take the graphs, to look at the graphs this way, not as uh, simply edges, but as a map. So this is actually in home, more generally, it's in home and it's an, in an orthonormal basis. But here, these homes are going to be one dimensional. Yeah? So there's a concrete object associated to every edge. And uh, maybe I should, uh, I think you have a bit of echo. Can you turn that off? That's, I think, that throws me off. It's off. Maybe there's a bit of echo from, from me. Um, okay, so uh, it, for me, these have started, in fact, as a way to put uh, things in the in the computer. So all the edges which I had were exactly encoded this way. There was something, some kind of generator, which was tensoring one vertex, and there was a home to the other vertex. And this could be composed, and then those uh, unitary in cells, yes, come exactly by comparing two ways to go from one corner to the other, yes? Because uh, it's a composition of homes. So uh, the only thing that wasn't in this form were exactly the graphs uh, ADE. So when I uh, programmed them uh, in, uh, I didn't want to break all the programming that existed already. So I, uh, I put them in as, uh, as uh, graphs of tensoring with something. Yes, and that something turned out to be exactly uh, the uh, SU2 at, uh, at the root of unity. And then uh, a whole theory came out of this. So it's very important in these things, uh, and I think in mathematics in general, uh, not to take uh, just abstract objects, but to think of always of concrete objects and you compose them and so on. You should uh, obsess over the meaning of an edge or an arrow or something like that. Now, uh, re let me remind you that if you have two edges like this, from alpha to gamma, this is, uh, this is uh, in uh, home from sigma 1. Sigma 1 is a generator, generator 
of SL2, and this would be at the at some nth root of unity where n is a coxeta number of uh, g. So uh, this is in home from sigma tends to sigma, sigma one tends to sigma one to to uh, tends to alpha to beta. And uh, in this, you find sigma two. And so uh, if you have the home from sigma two tensor alpha to beta, these, these are the essential path. Having dimension, called here fusion from, uh, so let's say this is I, the level I, this is I plus two, fusion from I alpha to I plus two. Gamma here. Yeah, this was a gamma all through. Okay, this is a bit of a setup. And uh, we could use a theory or the existing theory of quantum SU2 at the root of unity, or we can remark that we actually built it. It may need a, a few more words. We, we essentially built it by mapping the graph a n minus one into our graph uh, uh, a of type a d. So now what we want to show is that uh, uh, the if we take so we want to show that the projection, oh, thank you, thank you very much, that the projection onto the span, the linear span of the fusion of the Kronecker symbol of I alpha, so this is a point on the ribbon. So recall that our ribbon was uh, Z mod 2N product over Z mod 2 with G, and it looked like this. This was G, and then G again. So these were the level 0, 1, 2, and so on. And here it goes up to, in this case, a coxeter number of E6 is 12, so this would go up to 24, which is the same as 0. So we want to show that the projection of a point, this is here, some point delta, this is alpha, is on the graph, and this is at the level i. So it's a mass one here, that this is equal to, um, that this is equal to uh, the fusion one over n, one over the Coxeter number, that's a scalar, fusion from I alpha minus fusion from I plus two alpha. So in order to, uh, to do this projection, notice that, observe that this is in the fusion, span of the fusion. So all we have to prove is that, uh, 
All we have to prove is that the inner product of uh, delta I alpha with uh, some fusion from J beta is equal to 1 over n, the fusion from I alpha minus the fusion from I plus 2 alpha times the fusion from J beta. So that's a statement. Let me, this looks a little bit abstract, so let me spend one more minute in showing you how this uh, goes. So remember that, for instance, for the A3 graph, this was, uh, let's say, this is our alpha. And uh, if we project, so the projection uh, onto the span of fusion of this vector, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, and so on. Yes, is, uh, this is 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. Yes, is equal to um, this. 1 over 3, so this is a Coxeter number, times 2, 1, 1, negative 1, negative 2, negative 1, which is exactly the inner product of, so this will show later that this is exactly the inner product of this root with the others. So the inner product with itself is 2, and so on. And uh, the point will be that this is equal to 1 third of One third of one, one, zero, negative one, negative one, zero, plus this is our distinguished vertex plus 1, 1, negative 1, 0, negative 1, negative 1. And uh, there's uh, just a bit. This is 0 here. Yes. And notice that this one is shifted. So this is shifted, uh, shifted, oh, this is, okay. So this is uh, shifted down and there's a negative sign in front. Yes? 
So it's this one. If you shift it down, the minus one would go two floors down, yes? Shift it two down, two down a negative sign, or alternatively, it's the fusion upwards. The graph has two directions. And you see here, we have started from this point, and we go upwards. Just to rewind slightly, I know you've done this before, but what was the operation with which you turned this first graph to zero, zero, one, zero, zero, zero graph? Oh, there's no, uh, well, this should be the, the Coxeter number of uh, the graph uh, A2. Uh, the projection, so this, this should have the project, this would be the projection onto the span of biharmonic functions. You see, this one is not biharmonic. <coughs> Thank you for the question. So this is not biharmonic, yes? And this one is biharmonic. By the way, it should remind you of something. Uh, have you seen it in, uh, in something connected to Fourier things or so? If you graph it, this is a visual course as well. Do you see this goes uh, something like this? But it has also a, neg a big negative in the end, yes? So, so uh, it's bigger exactly where this thing is projected, the one, do you see? It's bigger around it and then it's, uh, it, it, it's opposite. So it's just like projecting uh, Dirac mass onto, uh, onto some uh, sine functions, yes? With a bounded uh, frequency. Any questions here? Yes, so there are two operations, and then we'll show that the span of the fusion, which is very easy actually, the span of the fusion is, it pre consists precisely of the biharmonic functions. Yes? So this is a span of fusion. So you see here you have a fusion graph. This is automatically biharmonic. And it is biharmonic, well, we'll show that. Why, so let's just uh, prove the projection on the span. And now, uh, let's do it. We have the following. Kronecker of the Kronecker symbol of phi alpha uh, in, a, in a with a fusion of uh, J beta. By the way, the notes from uh, this course and, uh, and uh, uh, many things done in parallel, that's why I have these notes. Normally I work without notes, but uh, these notes are going to be uh, made into a book and uh, with, with a, a lot of work uh, uh, from uh, several people here. And so, uh, after a while, we'll, uh, you'll, you'll be able to, to get them all together with a lot more than what, what fits in a course. So let's see, what is this? You start with fusion from J beta. Oops. Yes, you start with fusion from J beta, and you go up to I alpha. So this, this is going to be sigma. So is a dimension from sigma uh, I, so you go from J beta up to I alpha, yes? So this is sigma I uh, minus J uh, tens beta up to alpha. Uh, I should, I will need one more uh, uh, well, we're going to, to uh, prove it when we, when we need it. So this is, again, you started from J, 
and you go up to level I, you start it here with beta, and you take some essential path here up to alpha, yes? That's exactly the meaning of, uh, of this. And now we have to prove that this is equal to the following to uh, uh, fusion 1 over n times uh, the fusion i alpha. So let's take here n. Let's put here n in front. And we have to show that this is a fusion from uh, I, uh, I alpha minus fusion of J beta, uh, I plus 2 alpha in a with fusion of J beta. And here, this is done pointwise on the graph. Pointwise point on the ribbon. So it's number with number. They're considered vectors. And uh, so what you're going to have is then uh, um, this is going to be the sum over all the k's and gammas in the ribbon of uh, the home, the number of homes from uh, I alpha to, so let's write it properly, home from sigma i minus uh, k, I mean k minus i, just a bit, k minus i tends uh, alpha to gamma times the number of homes from sigma k minus j tends alpha to gamma. And this sum, we're going to subtract here the number of homes from the same sigma k minus i. But now sigma k minus i minus 2 tends alpha. to gamma times the number of homes from sigma k minus j tensor alpha tensor, and here it's beta, to gamma. So now um, we're going to move the things on the other side. And remember now that if we have the, so we have the uh, home from uh, U to v, to v is the sum, so the, is the tensor product, the sum over a base, so uh, over bases, these may not be reducibles, a base is W of home from U to W tends uh, home from W to V. So what we're going to have is that uh, And this is going to be equal to the sum, the sum that we had before. 
was equal to the sum over k and such that k gamma is in the ribbon There is a K gamma in the ribbon. You'll see where that comes into the picture of this home from sigma K minus I tens alpha to home from sigma K minus J tens beta. minus, so this is this number, minus the number of, you see we moved the gamma on the right hand side and summed over gammas. Yes. And this is going to be sigma k minus i minus two Tensor alpha to well, there's an extra home here, sorry, to sigma k minus j tensor beta is before. This is under the sum. And now we use the fact that sigma is <coughs> self adjoint I mean it's self-conjugate, so we can move the sigma here. And this is a sum of, uh, and let's put now only over k, but uh, this would be sigma, the number of homes from sigma k minus j tens uh, sigma k minus i tens uh, alpha to beta minus the number of homes from sigma k minus j tens uh, sigma k minus i minus two tens alpha to beta. <coughs> I could have moved it on the, on the beta side, but uh, yeah, let's do that. We can, we can put them in any case in any order. Uh, well, let's leave them like this. And uh, now uh, we can use here the the usual formula, and this is where I need to make a, a, an observation. So there's a formula which is uh, known; it's used by physicists and uh, not so much by mathematicians. Uh, these are the irreducibles of SU2. The formula holds in a more general setting. Sigma 0, sigma 1, sigma 2, they have dimensions. In the quantum case, they have dimensions 1, 2, 3. And remember that their dimensions look like this. Yes. And here you have N which is zero, and this would be sigma n minus one. And uh, look what happens here, the, the next, the previous dimension should be zero, so this is a sigma negative one. And uh, the next one would be here, sigma negative two, which would have a strange dimension of negative 
one. Yes, and uh, the point is that this one is killed. This one is killed as well at the root of unity. This one is killed classically. And I'm going to tell you what uh, that means. This, these are the negative of each other. So sigma minus two is a negative of sigma zero. And uh, uh, what this means is uh, not, is that this is a copy of sigma zero, just a trivial representation, but with a negative sign is in K theory. So it simply means that when you add things together, uh, this sigma minus two would cancel sigma zero. Yes, and similarly for the reflection here. Uh, formally, mathematically, you are in a quotient ring for the fusion. And uh, there, you don't need to worry anymore about uh, special things at the limit when, when uh, you tense, uh, for instance, sigma zero with uh, sigma five. Uh, you get a lot of terms from tensoring with sigma five, uh, most of which, let's try, try here something like this, just to uh, get you used with this. Sigma zero tense, uh, let's say sigma three, Let's put here sigma two. So this is quantum one, by the way, the dimensions times quantum three. This is going to be uh, sigma, well, let's take a, a little bit bigger, sigma three, which is quantum four here. So this is going to be sigma, um, Z, uh, let's see, uh, sigma, so le let's, let's uh, use this one for summation, and uh, just a bit, so we're going to have sigma zero minus uh, two, zero minus, zero minus one, oh, this is still too small, just a bit, plus sigma zero plus, no, this is sigma zero minus three plus sigma zero minus one plus sigma zero plus one plus sigma zero plus three. Yes, this is a formula for tensoring with sigma three. And notice exactly what happens. This is sigma minus three. This one would cancel sigma one. Uh, and this is sigma minus one, which, which cancels by itself. Yes, and what you, what you remain with is, is a correct sigma three. Yes, so you don't need to take, uh, uh, take special cases uh, anymore. Is this part clear? So let's write it formally. Uh, what we have is that sigma minus one minus k is equal to the negative of sigma minus one plus k. And sigma, Where's the other mirror? The other mirror is n minus one, yes? So sigma n minus one minus k is equal to the negative of sigma n minus one plus k. So this is, let's call this a classical cutoff. And this one is a root of unity cut off. So it's a cut off and a mirroring. Yes, once again, formally you have a 
representation ring in which you tensor things and you mod out by these relations. So now, what we have here is going to be if we, uh, so this is going to be the sum of a case. Now, so it's going to be the number of homes from, and we expand this tensor product, and what we're going to get is from sigma, the difference k minus j minus k plus i, tensor alpha, uh, let's just put, put these things together, plus sigma k minus j minus k plus i plus 2, plus, and so on, up to sigma k minus j plus k minus i. And now we have minus sigma, this tensor, sigma k minus j minus k minus i plus 2 up to sigma k minus j plus k minus i plus 2 and all of this tensor alpha up to beta. And now let's see, this one is negative j minus plus i. This one is negative j plus i, uh, negative j this is k plus i minus 2, where we subtract, and here we add it. Uh, so this is minus j plus i minus 2. So this one remains the occupier each an interval, so this is negative sigma minus j plus i minus 2. Plus sigma, and at the top, Yeah, I think that uh, there's a, where here. No, in the, in the last one, the plus line. This one. The previous line. Previous line. Yes, this is k minus j plus k plus. So this is a sum of the two, k minus j plus k minus i. Yes, and this is a difference again. This is k minus j minus k plus i minus two. And this is k minus j plus k minus i. Yes, and this is uh, minus i, and this should be minus 2 here, right? And this, so k minus j, let me uh, see here. I seem to have used a, a different notation altogether. So this is k minus i. So this is k minus j just a bit, k minus j minus k plus i plus 2 here, and this is minus 2. Yes, and let's see who remains here. So this one is bigger, so that one remains. Thank you. So this remains as sigma, sigma i minus j, you see this one remains, this one cancels with uh, this, plus 2, and 
So this is a sum which we should keep of the number of homes from sigma i minus j minus, let's put this tensor alpha, tensor alpha to beta, minus the number of homes under the sum, the number of homes from sigma This thing is going to remain as well. So this is 2k minus i minus j minus 2 tens alpha to beta. And There should remain one with minus. Yes, this one. Minus, not this. This one is, this one is the one that cancels with this. Yes, so, uh, yes, you mean this one remains. Yes, the, you're right with that. So this is going to be plus sigma 2k minus i minus j, yes. Thank you, tensor alpha and beta. And now uh, here, w the number of case, the number of case for each gamma, remember we summed before, for, the, for each gamma on ribbon with K gamma on ribbon, is n. The ribbon has length 2n, but every, uh, when, you, when you choose a vertex, each vertex appears n times. Yes, uh, look at that picture. If you go vertically, each, each vertex appears n times. And uh, so here we'll get a factor n and So what we're going to get this way is uh, exactly n times the number of homes from, and we can switch the two because sigma is self-adjoint, so this is sigma i minus j tensor beta to alpha. And the rest is plus zero because uh, we, the sum of all k's cancels, cancels to zero. Uh, do you see we sum for, for a pair alpha, beta? We sum all the... Uh, the essential path when we move beta at so these are all the positions of beta. And uh, uh, the ribbon is half positive, half negative, as we shall show, and this, this is, uh, so this cancels out, yeah. Uh, we can switch them because sigma tends, uh, so the number of homes, the homes from sigma tends, uh, let's say, alpha to beta, is uh, the homes from sigma tends alpha to beta are isomorphic to the homes from uh, alpha to sigma bar tends beta, but sigma bar 
is, is the same as sigma for SU2. This is just, in general, we have to take care of the conjugate if, we, if we're going to work uh, for, for, uh, for in a more general setting. And of course, you can uh, take here the adjoint and replace uh, the, two, uh, the two members, yes? So that would be the same. Uh, what this tells you is that on the ribbon, if you go, the ribbon is, has a symmetry. If you go downwards from I to J, yes, you get the same numbers as if you go upwards from J to I with fusion. Yes, the same number. So now, uh, so, so this is proved, uh, let's, that's exactly what we, what we had to, what we had to show, yes? And, um, now let's observe the following, that if you take the levels zero and one on the ribbon, so the, alpha i, i alpha in our notation, i, the set of i alpha with, in the ribbon. Yeah? Uh, the number is not correct, the number should be 2n. No, 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 the number is n. You can easily check that by example. It's actually one, one over six, it's not one third. You can check that by computing in the product. Really? Here, yeah, here the, the, the multiplicity of k is not n, it's two n. It's true, we did, uh, let, me, let me look. Uh, so uh, the inner product of, uh, uh, let's see. So the statement is that the Kronecker symbol, for instance, that one yes times um, times e any yes so let's see if we have that one to one and if we sum it is going to be plus one uh, plus two plus one plus one plus two and then plus another one and then plus another two so that's six versus one, you're right, it's, it's 2n. So we should uh, correct, sorry about that, we should correct everywhere 2n. Remember we summed of all k's, so this is one over six here, you're right. Thank you. And now let's take here the I alpha in ribbon with I is equal to zero or one, former basis. There's roots. These are roots now. So we're going to define a root the root i alpha is exactly this project is is a two n times the projection is a normalized projection of Kronecker uh, of i alpha onto the uh, uh, biharmonics. And we're going to show now that, uh, so this is another proposition or theorem, that the roots form a basis uh, on two consecutive levels, and that the span of the uh, fusion 
coincides with the biharmonics. So the part which is clear is that if you have a fusion, um, oh, let me see. I think we're going to leave this uh, for the next time. The span of the fusion equals to, let me just indicate the ideas here. If you have, uh, if you do the fusion from a point, the, uh, this biharmonic property, which looks uh, quite strange, it appears for it appeared for us from the graph, if you remember graph AN. Yes, but in general it appears because of associativity. So you have something like this sigma k tens uh, sigma tens uh, alpha, you go to beta. And if you put here sigma tens alpha, these are the neighbors of alpha and if you put here, these are the neighbors of K vertically. Yes? So uh, when you expand this, in, so, so the, the biharmonicity property, which, which was all the way around, here comes exactly out of associativity. Uh, the reverse will come out of the fact that uh, that the bihar we're going to show that uh, the biharmonics, the biharmonic functions, are spanned exactly by the functions which uh, are completely determined by the values which they take on the on two consecutive levels. Yes. And uh, you should notice then, and this is the last thing, if you take here the level zero and n minus one, these are exactly the simple roots. I mean, they have, uh, they have exactly inner product uh, uh, one with the neighbors, and after you move this n minus one here on the position minus one. So if you notice that n minus one is basically the same as uh, on, on minus one, here is a graph. Yes, so this shows that the graph is, uh, this will show exactly that the graph is the Coxeter graph uh, of roots and we'll continue uh, then uh, next time. So this is the identification of the of the ribbon with the usual uh, classical uh, roots. Yes, so as you notice here, the, the main uh, point was, I mean, everything was written in terms of tensoring with the generators of SU2 on the Dunkin diagram itself. So everything happens on the Dunkin diagram itself. That's kind of the underlying thing uh, here. The, the Dinkin diagram is much richer than the usual way in which it appears in, uh, in uh, the mathematical literature as simply a graph which encodes angles. Yes, it has this tensoring operation and that basically all the representation theory is done in terms of this tensoring uh, on, the, on the Dinkin diagram itself. Yes, so this is, uh, this is where we stop today.